Welcome back to Weekly Briefing. Earlier this week, a 15-year-old opened fire at a Michigan high school, killing four students and injuring six more students and a teacher. This footage, first aired by CBS, shows someone trying to get into a locked classroom and the students run to safety. Yeah, he said it's safe to come out. Now we're not willing to take that risk right now. I can't hear you. We're not taking that risk right now. Okay, well, to come to the door, look at my bag, bro. No. Yeah, bro. He said, no. he said bro. He said bro. Red flag. Suspicious of the person on the other side, the students run out of the classroom. Go <laughs> to safety. Slow down, you're fine. I want you to drop that We're okay. We're okay. Now, I'm a gun rights advocate and believe in the Second Amendment, but these types of situations seem to be growing more and more frequent. What needs to happen in order to stop this? What you're going to find in the long view on this when they conduct their investigation is that the shooter has fallen through the cracks. And sometimes it's by negligence, and sometimes really it's, uh, it's by an, an act of commission. So it's, it, you're going to find guidance counselors, teachers, uh, other school officials, people in the community. They're going to say, oh, yeah, he was troubled. Oh, yeah, he was depressed. Oh, yeah, he was disconnected. He was angry. And it will be a case where a young man was completely disconnected from his community, from right. his family, from his faith, mm -hmm. uh, from his, his peers, and that it was unaddressed. You know, there's other instances where school shooters had had, you know, long encounters, a number of encounters with law enforcement, and nobody ever said enough. The kid needs to be addressed and dealt with, whether it's through counseling, through a hospitalization, through there's some other means of addressing it. And when they finally do the analysis on this kid, they're gonna find out he either slipped through the crack, cracks or was ignored or forgotten. And that's what causes this. Donna, what do you think about this? Well, you know, uh, our school system has been failing for a long time. The focus has been away from students and onto the teachers and protecting them. So he's one of many students that have fallen from the, through the crack, but they may not have used the same aggression that he has, but it hasn't been on the, te the, the students for a long time. That's not what's important. And in fact, our kids are not important. We right. are doing everything we can to dehumanize and demoralize them. And then we're telling them that it's okay that we're doing it because so many activists think that their causes are better and that the kid, the that, that what's important for the best interests of those students don't matter. That's a very interesting point. Joe Biden lashed out at reporters showing empty store shelves and said that what you're seeing isn't true. If you watch the news recently, you might think the shelves in all our stores are empty across the country. That uh, parents won't be able to get presents for their children on holidays this holiday season. But here's the deal. For the vast majority of the country, that's not what's happening. And then Biden went on to redirect your memory back to the days of Beanie Babies. But there are items every year that sell out that are hard to find. Some of you moms and dads may remember Cabbage Patch Kids back in the 80s or Beanie Babies in the 90s or other toys that have run out at Christmas time in past years when there was no supply chain problem. Good news, Jim. You can still get your Cabbage Patch doll. Yeah, if only Ronald Reagan were president, right. then we wouldn't have these problems, would we? Yeah. Um, yeah, to say there's no supply chain problem, but at the same time, the administration is saying we're fixing the supply chain problem seems a bit of a disconnect. I mean, the gaslighting yeah. is, in yeah. is incessant. Uh, we know that there are shortages. We know that there are problems. We also know there are price increases. There are a lot of problems in the economy to stand up and just say, well, it's not happening. You know, even though reporters have video of empty store shelves, of yeah. people complaining about these things. Yeah, well, and that's what I think is so interesting because he's saying it's not true, it's not true. But like, we all go to the store. Like, we can all go see that there are empty shelves. Yeah. 
This is uh, uh, something that is reoccurring, and I actually think it's extremely destructive to our society. Um, in addition to what Jim said, you know, we've got Afghanistan fall, uh, falling to the Taliban, and the next couple of days he says it was a huge success. We see with our eyes that he has lost cognitive ability, and yet the administration says, no, that's not true. It's gaslighting, gaslighting over and over again. It reminds me, you know, Chris is always talking about the book 1984, right? It reminds me of that. Uh, in the book, the government was saying, war is peace. What were the other ones? Ignorance is strength. Yes. Right. Freedom yeah. is slavery. Freedom is slavery. Freedom is slavery. <laughs> and it's so actually, I see you guys have read it. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> I read it because Chris made me read it. <laughs> it's, it's more serious, I think, than we're putting emphasis on because it actually destroys people's... Uh, their faith yeah. in, this, in their the, faith, the government. Um, yeah, and their faith in themselves. Yeah, very interesting. All right, it is time for the lightning round. Here we have three minutes and give the panelists each 10 seconds to answer and get through as many questions as we can. We'll start with Jim. So the lead prosecutor in the James, I'm sorry, the lead prosecutor in the uh, Gaylene Maxwell trial is James Comey's daughter. Will Gaylene Maxwell have a fair trial? If she lives. <laughs> no, they're already redacting information that's available to the public that should be part of the court record. I agree with that. So in essence, you know, the American people, in a way, aren't getting a free trial by their system, right? Right. Yeah. It's all a cover-up to, to hide all the sins of a lot of powerful people. I think there's a lot of powerful people that don't want her talking. Okay, should CNN have fired Chris Cuomo for helping his brother escape liability? If they're not going to fire Tubin, they're not <laughs> going to fire Cuomo. I, I agree with Jim. I mean, it, Chris Cuomo probably should have been fired for other issues yeah. years ago. Yeah, does it even matter at this point? No, I, I won't cry for Cuomo. <laughs> they, they should, but they're not going to. Okay. Is the Waukesha Christmas Massacre getting enough attention? Not, a, not in the least. Not with that red SUV. Don't mention the guy's name who actually did it. Blame the car. Yeah, it's not getting the right amount, of, the right kind of attention. The guy should have never been let out of jail. They're never going to admit to their mistakes, so they're always going to push that under the rug. Will the Supreme Court side with Dobbs and start to dismantle Roe v. Wade? It looks like they might kick it back to the states. Back to the states. That's where it's going. You know, for the first time in a long, long time, I think there's a little bit of hope towards that. We'll see. Yes, I absolutely think so. Yeah, I would actually be shocked if it didn't happen. Well, no, nothing's going to shock me these days. But <laughs> anyway, are American Democrat citizens starting to move to the right? Well, one would hope so. <laughs> They're completely disconnected from the militant socialist left that's sitting in uh, Congress right now. Yeah. And I don't know that they're moving to the right. I don't think the government, the Congress, represents actually who the Democrats in America are. I think they are. I mean, I'm shocked that the number of black liberals that I talk to who are more willing to speak with me and work with me than they are their own colleagues, and that's amazing. Interesting. That's a really interesting point. OK. Will Democrats ever allow Kamala Harris to be president? Uh, I don't think so. It's coming. Watch. Okay. I don't think so because she is not as moldable as Biden is. I sure hope so because there's not enough fraud in the world that could push her over there. <laughs> so that'll be a good thing. All right. Don't go anywhere. When we come back from the break, we cover this week's panel's choice and see which topics that they thought were important. We'll be right back. 